All right. Hello, everyone. Um, we are back. What's up? And this is uh, Nate, the main guy, and with me, as uh, occasionally occurs, <laughs> Nima. What's up, guys? So um, we know uh, Hodgepodge has been streaming a ton, and I hope you guys are checking out his channel. Um, there's been a lot of games recorded, and we wanted to get back to doing some of the strategy videos. Um, and we thought it might be fun to to do the video as a Twitch stream so that other people could participate uh, if they wanted to. So we're not planning to play a game right now. We're going to spend a little bit of time uh, going through through some of the cards. And um, we thought what would be cool is to have like a set review. Um, for those of you who have played some other card games, you know, there are a lot of people out there that will do uh, set reviews and go through every card. And uh, a lot of people that watch the YouTube channel are, are uh, you know, beginner to intermediate players. And we thought this might be a fun way to do that. So if you're joining us on the uh, chat, uh, you're welcome to hang out and uh, give your two cents on the cards. Uh, you can help us with the grading. Uh, if you have stories about cards, things like that, that'd be cool too. Um, and so that's the, that's the plan. Yeah, so this is like the first in a series of these, you know, there's hundreds of cards and base terraforming mars so you know this is kind of it's almost kind of going to be a, a podcast of sorts that you can just put on and listen to in the background if you want to and occasionally look over uh but yeah if definitely join us on twitch i think we'll be probably streaming these in general maybe not all of them but most of them yeah and let us know if you need me to put my volume up and nema's down a little bit if you're like washing the dishes or something like that if you you know uh, just let me know um you know, how we can optimize it for your experience. Yes, also let me know if you want to black out Nate's camera. <laughs> That's generally a requested feature that I've heard anyway. Um, makes it a lot more watchable. Um, okay, um, Nima, before we get going, do you want to just check to make sure the chat's working? Because I, um, you type something sure. in there. I just want to make sure because we're using this different setup. Okay, cool. There's a chat. All right, okay. man. So, um, do you? What do you think? I mean, I feel like I feel like we may have to start with anti gravity technology. <laughs> that that is very fitting for cardboard from Mars. I think it's a good idea. And so here we are, the big daddy, anti grav technology. Well, if you guys watch our channel at all, then you know that this is Nate's favorite card. It is. Um, it is often derided. Nate's choice of taking this card is often derided, but I think it's a pretty good card. Like, it's like okay, so it costs seven science tags, right? And I think the reason a lot of people don't like it is because of that. It's just really hard to get down, and therefore the 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 benefit that you get from it comes late game, kind of by definition, right? Yeah, I mean, I think I think the thing about anti grab is that like people know that it's it's a pet card of mine, and also a lot of people just like it. People who like to build around stuff, but I actually think the card is just good. I think it's quite good, and you know, obviously, if you compare it straight up to something like Earth Catapult, uh, Earth Catapult is the card that you know I think it costs twenty two. Yeah, uh, it's an Earth tag, and it makes all of your cards minus two. You know, obviously it doesn't compare favorably to Earth Catapult in the sense that you can just play Catapult on turn one and you've got it active for the whole game. And so I think a lot of people that bag on Antigrav, you know, they, they're, they're thinking about it in comparison to Earth Catapult. But the reality is that they can both be good. There's room in the world for both to be good. <laughs> and they're good in different ways. So, um, yeah, I mean, Earth Catapult on turn one can just be relentless uh i mean I, it, just the way that that card plays and it can just completely take a game over but anti-grab is also very good because in order to play it you have to play a bunch of science tags which are also good right right so like by the time that you've played anti-grab yeah it's not coming down on turn one but it usually is suggesting that you've had a strategy that's gotten you there and you're going to have some other cumulative benefits as well. Yeah, that's certainly a good point. I mean, you got like your, presumably you, maybe you got like a mass converter or, um, 
there's lots of payoff cards, I guess. Um, lots of economy cards and yeah, and and you know the the three points on anti grav can't be um, overstated either. That's a lot of points, and for fourteen cash, yes, it takes a lot to get there. But like you said, you probably got a pretty good engine as by the time you get here. I think anti grav's really good. I mean, it's it's clearly. I mean, the other thing about anti grav is that there's an opportunity cost to not taking it. You you don't want to pass it because even if you're even if you're planning to not play anti gravity technology, if somebody else gets it, it can just kill you in the late game. So, I mean, not only is it good when you want it, it's definitely good not to pass it to other people. And to me, that's a mark of a card that's that's pretty good. Yeah, certainly at least you kind of have you kind of pause a little bit right before you think about passing. It's like ugh. And it, just by the fact of doing that, it probably means it's a good card. <laughs> you know what I mean? Completely. Yeah, I think you have I to think, think about it twice. I think anti grav is really good, and you know we should probably talk a little bit about our scoring system. You know, we haven't really talked about that, but oh yeah, I would say I would say that um, you know anti gravity technology you could score it two ways. If you call it like a build around, right? Like if you say. If you're trying to assess this card, assuming that you can play it, it's just a flat A, right? I mean, if you have, if you're in the ballpark of six or seven science tags, anti grav is just amazing, right? So what you're really sure. talking about is, what is it if you open, you know, if you have it in your opening ten with like maybe another science tag or something like that, you know, what, what's its sort of average use case? I still think it's a B plus. I, I mean, I know that there are gonna, that's going to be somewhat controversial. There will be a lot of people that wouldn't take this out of their opening 10. But even if you don't have a lot of science tags, I would, I would take a flyer on this on turn, turn one um, and hope to, hope to develop into a game where it would be useful. Would you still take it without any other science tags in your opener? I'm pretty much at the point where I would. I know I'd be ridiculed for doing so, but <laughs> the thing is it costs you two credits to take that risk, right? Because if you... If you don't need it, you just sell it at some point. Um, yeah. You know, so I think you know two credits to have a, a card that's just, you know potentially backbreaking. I think it's just it's great. I agree. I generally like this card quite a bit. Um, do, do you think? Do we want to like give letter grades the way we do to corpse for these cards? Yeah, I think this is a my scoring on this would be a B plus overall, and it's a build around A plus. Build around A plus. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's pretty close. Like I, I'm going between a B plus and an A minus. Um, yeah, like ultimately, from what I've seen when we we get this card down, it's you generally have it online for maybe two possibly three generations how many um, times have you played ai and lost it certainly happened it has but it doesn't happen often yeah i mean it is uh yeah i mean science strat is just great yeah. it just is hey private welcome uh we're, hey. we're going to be rating the cards here so we're talking about we're just winding up on anti-grav if you have uh if you have some thoughts uh feel free to go ahead and and uh, include them in the chat. But yeah, I, I, I think I can agree with your ratings. Uh, I think B plus is probably, B plus, A plus is pretty close to what I was thinking anyway. All right. Um, let's move on to the next card here. Okay. Next one is Acquired Company. Um, yeah. What do you think about Acquired Company? I generally like this card. I think it's really, you know, this is one of those cards, like, and this is going to keep have, coming up over and over again, but, like, in general, it matters when you get this and when you play it. So if this is a great card for the first couple generations, for may, maybe the first three generations, because then, you know, you want to recoup the cost as quickly as you can. And if you play this, like, the middle of the game or even worse, late in the game, it's terrible but yeah I, I think this is a good card like you you're um 
it's going to make uh, make its money back in three generations. Um, and, you know, MC production helps with trying to go to banker, stuff like that. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think with, with every card in Terraforming Mars, what you, what you want to do for the ones that don't have points on them, you want to figure out what's the total cost and how long will it take you to recoup that cost and then how much benefit will you get after you know after you've recouped the cost so in this case if you buy the card it's three credits to play it as 10 it costs 13 and you're getting a bump of three to your tr or to your credit so it's going to take you essentially four generations to pay it off and you'll get you'll start making credits on the fifth generation and over yeah. the course of the you know in a 10 to 11 generation game that means you're going to be making money off it for five or six generations you probably get about 20 credits yeah that's pretty good that's pretty good and there there are a lot of things that would really move you more aggressively to take this like if you're playing Teractor or if you have uh, earth yeah. office or something like that or if you just draw it you know like if you if you um, play an ocean tile or something and you I mean there's a lot of things that affect that but I think that in general, if you're going to be getting 15 to 16 credits off the card, it's probably worth doing it. Um, but you can really see why points on cards are so good. Because imagine imagine acquired company with like a point on the card. It would be insane. Yeah, I think that would be a little much. Right. I mean, so... I, I, I tend to play this on turn one or two. Uh, I tend not to play it as aggressively afterwards, but um, it is it is worth saying that like just having raw credit production is better than having mineral production. So another card that's like this is Titanium Mine, which costs seven. So it's a little cheaper to play, and Titanium is worth three. So they're similar in their credit boost, but you're you're so constrained in what you can play with those Titanium cubes that you know Acquired Company is just generically better. Sure. I agree with that. And there are some cards that key off the earth tags. So if you have like, um, you know, like um, Miranda Resort or um, what's the other one that uh, bumps you for every earth tag that you have. I can't remember what it's called. Is it, uh, earth Office? Cartel. Or is that the... Cartel. Cartel. Yeah, yeah, that one comes down and gives you a bump for every earth tag you have. So I think Acquire Company is pretty good. I would give it, you know, I don't know. It's a B, uh, maybe a, maybe That's, a C, C plus. I I was I was going B, like I, um, like I said, we we've been saying it the whole time. But if you get it at the right time, it's actually pretty good. Um, it's just you don't necessarily get it at the right time, and it's really dependent on that. So, yeah, maybe uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go B minus. Yeah, private chimed in over here. It says C plus. C plus, yeah. Um, but that's and I, I think fine. factored into that Nemo is just what you said, which is that like if you if you get it early, it's a little better, right? I mean, if you get it on in your opening ten, you're probably going to take it and play it, and you'd be quite happy with it. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so I say acquire companies a C plus. Um, All right. Yeah, pretty cut and dry, and it's not a complicated card, but there is stuff to talk about with every one of these cards. Interestingly. All right, man. I'm I'm curious to hear I'm curious to hear your thoughts on adaptation technology. Yeah, this is an interesting card. Like, um, we, you know, I I don't know about you, but I've I've changed my mind about this card a little bit at least. Um, generally, I don't like it, but um, there is one way in which I really like this card, and that is playing it with Inventrix. So, uh, if you don't remember. Adventrix basically gives you gives you this ability in the first place, which is you can change any global requirement by plus or minus two. But the thing is, this stacks on top of Inventrix's ability, so you can do plus or minus four, and that's just really fun. Like I think that's one of the most I think that's one of the most fun things in this game to me. Um, you know, you you've got uh, like for you, Nate, it's your. Um, Mining guild, right? And I think this is one of the most fun things in the game to me. Adaptation technology and just like cheating stuff out early. Yeah, I think that's so fun. Like getting, I don't know, like getting cows out like three generations early with this card, for example. It, it's just so cool. It really helps with all of the plant generation cards and 
a, a bunch of the ocean cards. There's a lot of cards with global requirements in this game. And so, yeah, the, the Inventrix adaptation tech combo is just fun. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I, I've taken a little bit of a journey with adaptation technology, you know, like when I when I first started playing the game, I just thought it was unplayable. Like I just, you know, like yeah. I, I would literally auto pass it without even looking at it or looking at the cards in my hand. And since then, I've definitely played games where adaptation technology did some did some work. I mean, yeah, you know, like it, you know, private mentioned in the chat here that if you if you need the science tag, like so let's say you're starting off with anti grav or you know with some of the other cards that that key off of science multipliers, this can be you know the science tag can be very beneficial. And you know, I think it's also worth noting that a point is, in my opinion, probably worth about five to eight credits right so That's like if you if you if you just think okay like what is a card how much would you spend for one point like towards the end of the game you're pretty happy to get a point for five credits that'd be great yeah you know would you be happy to get a point for eight credits probably i mean yeah it, it, that's kind of the break that's kind of the point where you're kind of like meh you know like so if you're saying, let's say you you call a, a credit worth or a point worth six credits, then this costs you an additional nine credits to get this ability plus plus or minus two on on global requirements and the science tag. I think it's that's a reasonable proposition. Like the the card is is definitely better than I thought initially, mm -hmm. but I think that the there is another fundamental conflict with this card, which is that. Any credits that you spend early, they also could have been used to do something that would have bumped your economy. Yep. So, like, let's say you played Earth Office, or I'm sorry, Earth, let's say um, Acquired Company, the card we just reviewed, instead of this, Acquired Company is going to generate you 20 credits by the end of the game. Yeah. So, if you think that, if you think that a point is worth you know, six credits at the end, Earth acquired company basically is worth three credits. Whereas adaptate, adaptation technology may actually cost you points because it took money that could have gone into your into your resource development. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't think that's quite accurate though, because what you're buying with adaptation technology is not the point. You're buying the ability, really. Like the point is like, I think it's a nice ben, uh, like bonus, but like what the ability could in theory get you is a lot more than one point that's the key so i think that if if you can take advantage of this card it can be good right like if you can get algae down you know or like like you were saying like some of these cards that require these global parameters are like let's say you can play cupola city and the oxygen's at nine sure. or you yeah. can or whatever or 10 or whatever i mean if you can if you can use adaptation to technology to your advantage uh like private o'malley just mentioned uh kelp farming i mean if you're playing in ventrix and you can put kelp farming down with two oceans yeah. that's amazing right so so i think the key with adaptation technology is that it can be good but in general you need to have you need to have a decent thought that it's going to that you're going to use the ability if you're not going to use the ability at all I probably would not do this. I, I totally agree with that. I mean, hundred percent. Like, if, unless you're just like super desperate for a science tag, right? Um, Which I have been before and often am. Sure. Like, if, yeah. The last thing I'll say about this before we rate it is like, think about some games. Like a lot, a lot of games of TM, especially in three player, end up really heavy on one track, one global track, or the other. Typically, heat. Right. Yeah. So he tends to fill up a lot quicker than oxygen, sometimes the other way around, and or oceans. And if you can get a card down that really takes advantage of that, like let's say the heat's up really high, and um, I don't know what's a good card for this, like one of the one of the animal cards that needs really high heat, but... Um, like fish. So, thank you, fish. Um, so it's, let's say you get fish down and like the oxygen track is barely filled at all. Right, right. 
so now you've got a huge amount of time where you can keep uh, accruing fish on this on that card, Completely. and it's worth a lot of points. So. No, it's, um, I mean the ability. The ability is good in every direction. It's good for getting cards out early, you know, ahead of schedule. It's good for getting cards out that you've already exceeded their limit. Um, you know, I mean, it 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 has a. It's it can be very good. Yeah. So, to to assign this a, a score, though, I honestly over, overall, I probably give it like. I go C on this one. I like I think it's it can be super awesome, but more than likely it's just not worth the cost. Yeah, I'm I'm going C on this too and like also you kind of look like that dude right here <laughs> <laughs> in wow. the middle. I mean, that you, might you think it so, up for huh? me. That I mean just I mean clearly clearly he's like not quite the same, but you got the same beard going on, you know? Like, it's it's pretty cool, man. That's you. That's basically you. Uh, yeah, thanks, Nate. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, I think we agree on this one, C. And I do think that this is a very interesting card. And I think this card really typifies why terraforming is so great. Because, you know, so many of the cards are situational, and that's why the game is fun. Um, when you get to adaptation technology and just and it feels broken, it's it feels like like you kind of cheated, you know, like you you're, you it makes yeah. you feel so clever, you know. And I I mean, right. come on, let's be honest. Like that's why we all we play these games, you know. Yeah, exactly. I, it, yeah, you find these these little combos, and it just like kicks the endorphins off in your brain, I right? Know, man, like, I know, it's such great. a good feeling. All right, we got a, We got a doozy for the next one here. You ready for this? I don't know if I am, man. Oh, advanced yeah. alloys, advanced alloys. If you guys um, couldn't tell, we're going in alphabetical order here, but <laughs> well, we're not. We're not quite going in alphabetical order because I haven't scanned all the cards in yet. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, hello, Quellix. Welcome. We're doing. Uh, we're doing oh, a hey, set set review. Uh, so we're going through all the cards, and you're welcome to hang out. We're going to put this is more for the YouTube channel, but uh, we thought since we hadn't streamed in a while, you guys should. Uh, Join us, and we'd love to hear your comments on the cards, too. Okay, Advanced Alloys. So, this is a pretty interesting card. Um, I think I think most beginning players, including us, at least, or at least including me, I, I won't include you necessarily, but I, I think... Was, I was most, never a beginning player. I just want to get on the record. <laughs> most beginning players take a look at this card and think it's just, like, broken and amazing. Um... I will say it is a good card, uh, but this once again suffers from the when did you, when did you get this card effect, right? So like once again, just like acquired company, you have to play it in a, such a manner that you will recoup the costs. So when like when when would be a good time for that? I would say much like acquired company, I think you can play this a little later than acquired company. I'd maybe take it to four or five at most. What do you think about that? I mean, I think this one just, it just really depends on when or like how much uh, production you have. Um, totally. Because like if you're, if you're like advan uh, interplanetary cinematics and you play it on turn one and on turn one, you netted, you know, I mean, 20 credits or I mean, you know, it costs you 12 and you netted eight credits just off the 20 steel you start with. Like you're, it's amazing, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you, there are even situations in the game and on Gen Eight where you draw this thing, and it's like, oh, I've got you know four titanium and nine steel, and it's just it right away pays for itself. Yeah. Um, so it's really about doing a calculation. Yeah, that's a good point. It's not necessarily just time based. Um, I'm well, looking at some of the comments here. Um, Quellix feels like it's a win more card. Like you're basically, if if this card's good, you're already crushing. Um, okay. Yeah, and then Sid Sid basically is is mentioning what I just said, which is that most production cards require a generation to kick in, whereas this is one of the few cards where it comes into play and gives the effect immediately. So it sort of has like haste, you know, like to use a magic term or whatever. Like it comes <laughs> right. in. 
you know, you don't have to wait a generation to get the payoff. And so that actually um, makes a difference. I mean, it's also worth noting that it has a science tag on it. And, mm -hmm. you know, like just anything that has a science tag on it is just good. I, I mean, they're, they're just, because the science is so powerful as a strategy, um, you know, you, you, they just get an upgrade for having that on there. So this card is situational, but man, it can just be, it can just be absolutely, it could just be a house in the right deck. Yeah, I, I agree. I've, I've, I've seen this, I've seen this card win some, a bunch of games, you know? Yeah. I think, I think what people are saying in the chat, which is, which I definitely agree with is that you'll often see people play this card at times when it doesn't quite make sense. Right. And, and I do, I would say when that happens, if you're playing against good players, you can actually in uh, you, you, you can infer quite a bit about what they have in their hand based on it. You know, like if, if a good player plays this card in a situation that's unusual, you, you're probably confident that they've got something like um, Mineral Deposit or they've got the, you know, Steel 2 Steel card or, you know, they, they've got something coming that's, you know, going to, that's going to be risk, you know, scary for you. So it's also worth thinking about that, that when, when someone plays this card at a time that looks strange, you know, maybe think a little bit about what they might have in their hand. That's an interesting point. Like, yeah, if they don't have a lot of minerals in, in their in their bank, certainly. Um, hmm. I I think this card. You know, again, just like like every card, um, it's gonna it's gonna depend on what you have. But I I would call this almost like a combo card, but it's it's a combo. You know, B plus A minus because when you when you, when this card works, it 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 can generate a lot of money. Yep, I personally go a minus on it just because I, I I don't know like, it, I think its upsides are generally bigger than its downsides as far as like. It usually is good, a majority of time it's good. There's there's occasions where it's not. I agree. I mean, imagine even like an average use case where you have four. Let's say you have four mineral production on turn five or something like that. Well, okay, you just generated 24 credits off it. I mean, you spent 12, you generated 12. That's that's like playing this in the middle game with with four credits, with four mineral production. But it's pretty easy to have a game where you're generating 12 mineral production, right? And then it's just 12 per turn. I mean, imagine a card that's, that said, pay 12, bump your credits by 12 like you'd be like what that's not fair yeah i don't know if it's easy to have 12 but well, it's, when it's I certainly play, possible when i play it is i don't know about you uh, yeah. you know i mean you know you should you watch you should watch my going. stream yeah. nima and you could see how to do that yeah i'll have to do that so i can learn how to play the game <laughs> i'm just messing dude um, <laughs> well it's like i and i also I, I love mining guild and i play mining guild almost every time so that may skew that may skew things a little bit um yeah, so we got Hodgepodge uh, on the stream right now. Yeah, Hodgepodge, oh, we're hey. doing we're doing some um, we're doing card ratings. We're doing a strategy video for the YouTube channel. We're doing some card ratings. Um, so uh, there there you have it. Um, well, where 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 are you coming down on this one, Nima? Where do you come down on uh, on on um, advanced alloys? Yeah, I th I think it's an A minus. Um... I, I can no. be persuaded A minus. I mean, I think it's probably more accurately more like a B plus, but I I do think I mean, come on, man, it's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fun, first of all, but like, I I, I think I stick by the A minus. Like, I think I think it has more utility than downsides. I agree. I mean, you you could make the case that that's sort of like a B, but but you know. Uh, Hodgepodge thinks this card's insane. Um, I mean, you know, he he. I think he agrees with you, Nima. Yup. All right, we're gonna go. You you convinced me. We'll go A minus for advanced alloys. Um, and um, let's move on. Let's move on to the next one here. Advanced ecosystems. Ah, that's a fun one. Man, a lot of good A cards, huh? <laughs> 
Yeah, well, I mean, it, it, so far these have been strong cards, um, and and I, I don't think we're going to have to talk quite so long about all these cards, but we we've hit a few that had good discussion points. That's true. Yeah, this is another one that I think has really like gone up in my estimation over the years. Um, this uh, like this card isn't necessarily like super great on its own, but um, if if you get to the the kind of combo strategy where you you have viral enhancers and you're doing a bunch of plant and other microbe stuff, this this card's great. Um, but I think it really depends on you having that combo going. Do you know what I mean? Like it it's it doesn't really work if you're just going plants or if you've got one you you've got like livestock down or something like that it takes a lot to get it down but if you have it down this card's amazing i yeah i think this card is just really good um you know i think uh i completely agree with you this is a card when i first started playing that i usually just ignored and i think um there's a natural tendency for people when they start playing terraforming you can you can see like the evolution in the way that the strategies of the game unfold to a new player you know and i for those of you that are on the stream obviously um it's a lot of advanced players but for those of you watching on the youtube channel um you know maybe they're they're play players that are a little bit more beginner but what i did when i first started playing this game it was all about the big events you know it was like demos down and giant ice asteroid and it was you know it was just like things that bumped your tr and did big flashy things and then you figured out jovians you know and then and then most people figure out mineral production as a strategy or essentially economy then i think much later you start to figure out how powerful plants and animals can be in particular animals and yeah the 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 specific cards revolving around viral enhancers and the and uh ecological zone uh, even even that um, I'm, not, I'm forgetting the name right now, but it's the it's the uh, microbe card that you put three microbes on it to get a point. Sure. Um, these cards can you can get a lot of points in plants and animals. Um, and I mean, playing advanced ecosystems with uh, viral enhancers out is just I mean, it's gross. You get three plants, too. Um, so I don't know. This card is just good. I mean, 14 credits for three points is already a good deal. You're talking about four and a half credits per point, which we already, you know, talked about being, you know, that's a good rate. You'd be quite happy for that. Um, exactly. And this thing can just trigger off all of your other plant and animal combo pieces. And I mean, imagine playing advanced ecosystems with, you know, ecological zone out. And that other plant, the, I'm, I'm forgetting the name, but the microbe card that you stack microbes, you basically get, you know, two two additional points. It's like five points. I mean, it's it's like a milestone, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, but it's but it is completely dependent on that, right? Well, the other thing too is that ecosystems often it often kind of dovetails also with like. Um, you know, science and discount strategies. And so by the time you're playing EcoZone or ecosystems at the end of the game, it often costs less too. You know, you've often had research outposts down or maybe you got catapult down or you've got, yeah, maybe. you know, like you, this often will just cost you six. Um, anyway, I think this card's great. I think, um, I think it's, it's a, it's an A minus. This card's quite good. I, I go B plus. Just because I think it's you need a pretty specific kind of play style to get this down even, but once you do, it's amazing. Yeah, Sid Sid uh, has a has a great point too, which is that this is it's these kinds of cards that are really um, efficient point cards are great for the end of the game because like this is not a this this is not something that you have to play early in the game that takes away the opportunity cost for your money production. And then at the end of the game, you can figure out how to optimize your point scoring for the amount of credits that you have. And having a really highly dense, you know, efficient point score like this can be extremely valuable because, you know, you often end the game with like eight credits that you couldn't spend. 
you know so imagine instead of playing that you know somewhat inefficient you know 16 point card to get one credit or 16 credit card to get one point you're playing ecosystems for three or potentially more if you have some combos with it so um yeah yeah i think i think it's quite good yeah i think so too cool all right you ready Ready? I'm not sure. This is a big one. So, so we're gonna run this for about I don't know, maybe an hour, and then and then we'll then we'll cut it and uh, figure out what we want to do next. Um, you ready for the next one? This is a big one. Oh, AI Central. Boom! <laughs> Did your head just explode? So so exploded, man. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's, I mean, this this is one of the biggies, right? It's when when you think of great cards in terraforming Mars, this is one of the ones everyone thinks about. Um, it, to to some controversy, I would probably say, right? Because some people think this this card's like an auto win, right? I wouldn't go that far personally, but it is really good. It's very expensive, though. And it's not easy to get down. But man, if you get it down, especially early on, it is, like you said, a house. So we've already got some comments in the chat. We have Private O'Malley giving it a flat B. And and Sid is is just called it S tier, best card in the base set. See, that's what I'm saying, man. It's uh yeah. there's the controversy already. But like I mean, let's go to the brass tacks here. So, like, three uh, science tags, 21 money, and a, a power. That's really expensive. You can get yourself into trouble with AI, right? Like, you can you can be in a situation where you drew it, and you're like, oh, you're really, you're really excited that you drew it, and then you just completely hamstring yourself because you put everything into it, and now you don't have any money left or resources. So, you know, you really have to... You really have to decide for yourself whether card draw is going to be super beneficial for yourself. So, like, if you're doing Jovians, for example, this is a really good card, right? You can start digging for more Jovians. Um, if you already have, like, 16 cards in your hand or something like that, maybe don't play this. I, that's, I don't know. So, like, yes, this is a fantastic card, but, like, I don't, it's definitely not an auto play to me. Um, I don't, what do you think? Yeah. I mean, the, the thing about it is that, um, the, I, I agree with everything you said, but you just can't pass this card. The, the, where, where AI central just completely gets out of hand is when you have stacked up some discounts. So when yeah. you have earth catapult or, if you're if if you're playing AI on the way to anti-grav, or even if you just have like um, you know research outpost and a couple of the space cards that reduce cost, I mean you you can get into a zone with AI where you you're just you just get buried in card card draw. You know it's like um, in the late game if somebody has an economy going and some discounts, I mean. This is such an engine, like you just you cannot compete with it because while you're trying to buy cards off the top and just hoping that good stuff comes, I mean, people are people with AR are seeing so many cards, and a lot of the other science tag cards draw you more cards, so they usually fit into us into a strategy where you're seeing a lot of cards. It it is a swingy card because if you put a lot of resources into AI and you don't get any of the discounts. Um, you can find yourself pretty far, far behind, but um, I mean, it's pretty rare. I, like if you play AI within the first three or four generations, it's usually unbelievable. And sometimes you can just free roll it on generation eight or nine when you've just got a bunch of steel lying around and you get the point and you just draw a few more cards. I think it's worse, like the, the desperation AI play is gen six or seven where you, know, you, you kind of struggle to get the thing out. 
you got it out a little too slow and you don't have the discounts, that's when it can be backbreaking. Um, but the problem is you also just can't pass this card because it, like you just don't know what other people have in their hand and, and, and this card could just be unbeatable uh, in certain situations. So it's a tough one. I, I basically agree with Private that it's a B, but it's like an S tier B because you can't pass it. <laughs> <laughs> an S tier B, an SB. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah mean, I don't know, man. Like, yeah, like ultimately, this is a card game, and card draw is powerful in card games, right? So, yeah, and and this does, and this is a particular card draw that doesn't cost you anything when you do it, right? So it's not like you have to pay three for the cards you pay, for the, yeah, the tech you get. So, yeah, I mean, God, I mean, put it this way, dude. Put it this way, like. There's there's a card uh, I can't remember what it's called um, I'm 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 a little rusty now man but it's the it's the one with the science tag um, that you you can spend an action to look at the top card and then you can buy it and it costs uh, yeah. nine I think to play so twelve look how much In inventors better, guild yeah inventors guild look how much better AI central is. Sure, but Inventors Guild costs nine. But Inventors, <laughs> but Inventors you know. Guild is good. The card's good. Right. Yeah, it is. And AI just smokes it. See, I I I wonder if it smokes it. It's better for sure. No, but man, like, it's like it's literally it? in the bowl and going up in smoke, man. It <laughs> it is like it's just a it's a roach at this point, man. Wow. Well, well done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, I, I like, I don't know. I, it is, it is definitely better. Twenty-one money and a power. Sometimes, you know, that let's let's talk about the power, right? That's not that's not a throwaway thing. Like, at at worst, that power is going to cost you what eleven? What's it for the power? Um, yeah, it's eleven. Um, so somehow you got to get that power down, right? That's not, you know, that's not trivial. All right, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. If you were going to play a random, if you're going to play a game, a three-player game, and you got to choose three cards that you could that you could make sure that your opponent does not have to start the game, if you could take three cards out of the game that you would not give to your opponent in their opening <laughs> 10, which cards would you pick? That's an interesting question. Um, this definitely could be one of them. Like advanced alloys could be one of them. Hmm. I don't know what else. I think it's Earth Catapult, AI yeah. Central, and um, and potentially. Um, research outpost and or um maybe even anti-grav i like i know anti-grav is is the weakest of that group by far um you know privates privates mentioning asteroid mining consortium and uh and asteroid mining which are both good but i actually think that the titanium producers are are considerably weakened by the very existence of asteroid mining consortium right like like sometimes you don't want to play early titanium just because it's so backbreaking to have somebody play that against you. Um, whereas like you know Earth Catapult and AI Central, it's just like people can't stop you. I mean if you're, I mean you can cut science tags and stuff, but um, you know most of the time people just don't see the threat or it's impossible to stop. You know I mean like when I think about games where where someone's just run away with it. It's almost always AI and, and Earth Catapult. It's those two cards. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, fair enough. Like I, I it, this card, I think, is balanced pretty well in in general. Like it's it's one of the best abilities in the game, if not the best ability in the game. But it's pretty hard to get down. Um. So I, th I think that's as it should be. I think one thing is that um, I, I agree with you, Nima. I, I agree. It's, I, th I think it's fair. I don't. I don't think it's unfair. Like, if I had to choose a card to remove 
from terraforming mars it would be asteroid mining consortium or at <laughs> least i would take the point off it and i would make it a little more expensive um yeah. because that that card is just you know it's, it seems unfair to me but ai central does not seem unfair but i think that part of the reason for that is that um if you're playing a very competitive three-player game, when somebody gets AI Central going, it really is incumbent upon the other players to identify that risk and to, and to plan accordingly. And yeah. where things really get out of hand is someone gets AI Central going and and it's like everybody else just put their head down and kind of play solitaire and they're not thinking like, oh wow, that, re- that, that was a big thing that happened. And you really need to adjust your strategy to self-correct for these cards that are really broken. Um, Earth Catapult is hard to do that with because it's like a one card combo, but at least AI Central, like you said, it costs a lot, it's a power, it takes some time to get going, like it's it's a threat that can be dealt with. That's fair. I think it's it's a it's based on its utility at all points of the game, it's it's probably a B plus, but I think it's it's literally one of the best cards in the game. In, in this in in its Overall, I, I mean, I, I think it's it's like it's a weird card to grade because it is situational, but it is so unbelievably busted when it's good that it's basically still an A. I I think it's just an A. Okay. I know I've, I've now given it five grades, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a D. No, wait. Um, yeah, I, I I go A minus here. Um, I've i you know I don't know I I think I've played a game with you where this kind of lost the game for us. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure I've done that. I mean, I, I mean, there's no doubt, and I and I tend to be, you know, pulled into science at, you know, at the slightest provocation. <laughs> also, yeah, this and anti-grab, right? Well, for those of you watching on the YouTube channel, if you're if you're beginner players, and or intermediate, and you haven't experimented with AI Central, um, you should give it a try. It it really it's really really cool when you get AI going off, and you you've got some credit production and you've got the cards flowing and it's it's the most fun setup to get going in the game and and it and it, and it can be busted and sometimes when you when you're getting going on these games you you're not sure if it's worth it to go for something AI is worth it you should give it a try you'll have a lot of fun with it. By the way, we haven't really talked about the the building tag much. Um, that's yeah. a little bonus there, right? Like yeah. one you can buy with titanium or um, steel, but also it'll help you get to the builder milestone. So that's even more benefit. That's a great point, Nima. I mean, the building the building tag is is I mean, it's great. You know, it's it's really good. All right, cool. Uh, all right, so we've had a lot of discussions, yeah, so far. Yeah, do you want to do uh, like one more? Yeah, let's do let's do one more. Um, algae. Algae. So, or algae. Um, yeah, what do you think, Nima? Algae. So, um, you know, I was thinking, like, if people, I don't, this is not really set up for a podcast, but we could read the card if people are, like, have it on the background or something. But, no, that, that's, that, yeah, I think that's, we should do that, actually. That's a good point. So, cost 10, also requires five oceans down. Um, you get a plant and increase your plant production two steps. It's also got a plant tag. And it's got some so, sick art. I mean, this is really <laughs> Whoa, amazing. Look at, look at that algae, man. Whoa. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's Toby Hudson just knocked that one out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Toby. Um, yeah, you know, this isn't this is. I can't say that we've played this card that much. <laughs> um, art is as. Yeah, I agree. I actually think this card's uh, quite solid. I mean, any of the yeah. plant, any of the plant production cards that boost your production by two, are good. I think the there's quite a few cards that bump it by just one, and um, and I don't like those ones at all. Uh, you know, we, we we'll talk about those as we come through. But you know, the the one the one plant production for ten credits, not into that. Why? Why? I just don't think it's a good rate. I think. Um, you know, yeah. I mean, I think I think there's there's several that are that are two plant production, but this card has good utility. I mean, you know, third. Let's say you pay for it. It's so a thirteen credits, ten ten credits to play it, and three to buy. And you play this on turn, let's say five. 
and let's say you that you so you get three plants or you get one plant and then you get like 10 more plants i mean you're almost at two greeneries for 13 assuming you can protect your i mean that's that's a lot of value you know two two greeneries let's say you get two greeneries for 13 credits and you, you one of those greeneries is a three pointer and one of them is a two pointer because the oxygen track's already done. I mean, thirteen credits for five points is pretty good. I mean, I I think that these are they're easy to overlook that, that these are pretty good. You do have to figure out how to protect your plants and and to play play the plants in such yeah. a way that you're not getting um, getting hit with those all the time. But th these cards are powerful. Yeah, I, I I agree with everything you said. It's this is a generally a good card. Uh, it, Five oceans is a lot, but that's like you know halfway up that track, and I find that that's not that hard of a milestone to hit. And um, yeah, actually, Hodgepodge, you you kind of read my mind. This is a really good Inventrix card, right? Um, and and also with adaptation tech. So if if you can get this like at three oceans instead of five, or you, <laughs> if you got adapt, if got that combo down, imagine getting this down with only one ocean down. Uh, it's really good. I mean, if you get it on turn one, I mean, you're getting a lot of plants off it. Um, yeah. I mean, it is but worth I... it is worth noting that in terms of oceans, oceans often come down the first three pretty quickly because people want the card, right. the card placement, yep. and the titanium and mineral bonuses. Exactly. And so you can sometimes get stalled out at three, and that's that is why it's good with Inventrix because you 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 know that three is all you need. Totally, but even even in five, I think this is a pretty decent card. Um, you, you know, five oceans. I would say that's typically mid game. I agree. I agree. So it's not it's not late game. You're going to get some utility out of this. So two two plant production for ten is really good. Yeah, and this is where I mean, this is where having like viral enhancers gets picks you up another yeah. plant, and you know if you've got some of the eco zone and stuff like that, like you can start to you can start to see where this card by itself is good, but it also slots into a strategy that can that can take advantage of this plant tag. Um, it can be good to turn on nitrogen rich asteroid. Um, it's mm -hmm. good with insects. So there, there's a lot of there's a lot of combo cards for plants that that kind of are scheduled to come out in the mid to kind of early late game, and um, algae is just good. It's just a good solid workhorse. Like I'm not gonna like bend over backwards to take this card, but it's it's solid. Like I don't like passing it if I can avoid it. Yeah, I agree with that. This one's a so, solid B, man. Did what did you say B? Yeah, I think so. Um, I go a little high. I go B plus on this one. You're going B plus. I mean, yeah. I guess the question is like, you have to have some room in your scoring system for for like cards that aren't good. We we have we have reviewed quite a number of decent cards so far, but um, yeah, most of them. Have, I don't know, man. I don't think any of like. I think the worst one we probably reviewed is what acquired company, and that even that one's pretty decent. Yeah, I, I'm gonna stick with B for me. I, I don't I don't think it's quite B plus. I think I think when I think of a B plus, I'm thinking like. I see that card in a draft and I like, I'm really thinking I don't want to pass that card, you know? Um, whereas algae, like if there's, there's plenty of cards that I would take above algae. Yeah. Fair enough. Oh yeah. That's true. Adaptation tech was the weakest one. That's yeah. true. I'm going, I'm going um, B, but I, I, I can respect your B plus. <laughs> B plus because of the artwork. <laughs> <laughs> so the real yeah. question is what, what do you think? Which art is better? This or bushes, man. Oh my god! I mean, have you seen the alternate art bushes? I dare. I, I am afraid. To, I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> was it Was it drawn by by Nate? By a five year old. <laughs> okay, let's. Uh, you know, we still got seven minutes, Nima, before the hour's up. So let's do. Let's just do uh, maybe one more. Okay. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. We've got ants. Oh, you, oh, okay. Ants, yeah. Another interesting card. So cost nine, requires 4% oxygen. Um, it's an action card. It's a blue card. So you can remove one microbe from any card to add one to ants. And then you get one point for every two microbes on the card. Another, another interesting card that's probably increased in my estimation but not much. Um, I, you know, I, this was when we first started playing this game. I thought 
I would probably think this is like one of the worst cards in the game. And now I just think it's almost one of the worst cards in the game. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's really, it's really not good. Uh, and and the reason for that, this is so. This is the predators of microbes, right? This is how you take microbes off of other people's cards. Problem with that is not a lot of people play microbes because they're just not that good. They can be, but it's really one of the weaker strategies in the game. So as a result, ants not not so good. That's my general review there. I mean, I will I will say this about ants. Um... Again, like with every card in in terraforming, there are situations where it can be good. I think the the situation where ants is is the best is when uh, is when you're getting towards the end of the mid game, and it's clear who's winning. Okay, mm-hmm. Again, there's, these are a lot of like there's a lot of setup cost to ants, but I'm telling I'm going to try and tell you when I think it's good. So it's when when it's clear who's winning the game or who's second and that that person has uh, like a card like Tardigrades or something that has microbes on it that can't be removed. So not not like the microbe ones that boost the, the you know, the global parameters, but, you know, like one of the point scoring microbes uh, and, like um, Tardigrades or... Um, you know, whatever. There's, there's, I can't remember the other one, but I keep mentioning it. it's the one that you put three microbes on to score Nitrite point. reducing. Yeah, or something like that. Nitrite reducing bacteria. That's no, it's not that one. It's the, it's the card because nitrite you can bump them off. So the, what happens? Yeah, it's decom- oh. decomposers. So the, the problem with the cards that bump off are that if, as soon as you play ants, they do whatever they can to get the last bump, and then they never put another microbe on it, right? So what yeah. you want is you, you want something where somebody has a repository of, of microbes and they can't get rid of them. And then you play ants and they're either winning or they're in second place and you take a few you know, microbes off of their cards and it's like a two point swing because not only did you get some points off of it, but you took points away from them. Yep. So that's like the only scenario that I think ants is good. Um, if you if you play it in almost any other scenario, I think it's pretty weak. I mean, I guess if you have um, you know uh, the 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 what's the the space card that lets you put some microbes on something? Um, I'm forgetting the name on that one. I'm oh, a little, man, I haven't been playing terraforming. Let me see here. But uh, it's it's the convoy card or whatever that lets you bring. Oh them. yeah yeah. Um, anyway, I I think it can be good. It could be good in that one. Somebody in the chat uh, just large, mentioned large con. No, not large con. Somebody mentioned uh, extreme cold fungus, um, where you can put two microbes on a card every turn. Even that I don't love because that's pretty expensive. You now pay twenty one credits uh, just on the face of the card, and then an additional six, like twenty seven, um, twenty seven credits to put a point on a card every turn. I don't know, man. Like you, by the time that you the oxygen's four and you got this as combo assembled, it, I don't think it's that good. No, I think I think it's best when you're taking points from someone else. I, I like that's the way that this card I think is good. Yeah. By the way, you're, it's it's either imported hydrogen or imported nitrogen. It's imported nitrogen. Yeah, it's that that's the one. It's the one that puts three microbes on the. Uh, with the, it's plants, microbes, and animals. So if you just yeah, that's a, nitrogen. Yeah, if you just need a way to to well, like a place actually, to hydrogen does that too. It does, but you have to pick one. That's true. So like on the imported hydrogen, you'd much rather just take plants or or animals. But the the imported nitrogen, you get all three, and so yeah. you you want a place to put those microbes. Fair enough. But, okay, well, what's your rating for this one? I think it's a D. That's uh, I was gonna go D plus. It's uh, really bad. I mean, is D plus you just give to the person who like kind of sucks, but you still like them? <laughs> like if you're grading Con- in, a, in a class. That that's not how I feel about this card, but yeah, I guess. <laughs> like it's you know, there's there's a small window of of opportunity where this card is good, and let's, it's just let's like not, so let's small. not get emotional about it just because we like Ants Nema. It's a D. <laughs> Don't tell me what to think, man. <laughs> I think this one's a D, but okay. That's I, if you want to go with your D plus, it's all good. That's right. 
Um, cool. All right. Well, I think um, I think that's going to do it for this episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. We're, we're going to have a lot of these. Uh, we may not do them all the time, but we're going to try and, and mix it in. There's a lot of play examples now, so we wanted to put out a few more strategy videos. Yeah, that seemed to be like the most utility as far as what we're seeing on the YouTube channel. Um, yeah, let, let us know what you guys thought of this format. Um, you know, we, we tried something different by taking it on to the Twitch stream, and I think it was pretty good. I don't, I don't know what you thought, but I think it worked pretty well. Oh, I think it was great. I mean, first of all, there's a lot of really good players, and um, I mean, they're, they're going to point out stuff that we, we didn't think about. And, and I think it's also just cool to have a conversation about about these cards you know i mean they're you know it's like you like the whole ai discussion i love that i mean it's you know yeah. um it, it's cool to 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 pick apart these cards um you know it really makes me wish that they would just you know we've talked about this before just publish <laughs> a new set of cards because it's it's the cards that make this game awesome and um man there's a lot of design space that um i mean i think they really nailed it in the first iteration like i'm you know kudos a plus but um man i'm I'm ready to have some new ones to talk about everyone watching this is probably nate's number one desire in life <laughs> there's 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 like food shelter <laughs> You know, heat and then new terraforming set. That's Dear kind Mr. Of it. Frixelius, if you ever watch any of our videos or this one, um, I would like a job. <laughs> and um, you know, I'm pretty fun to work with. I think. Um, yeah, I think I think you would probably quit being a surgeon if you could work on terraforming. You know, it <laughs> there it would certainly not be in my financial best interest, but no. um, in terms of just my overall happiness, it might be it might be added value. <laughs> I think it would. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for watching this one, and we'll we'll catch you on the next one. Please leave your comments, um, and um, and we'll, we'll get you on the next one. All right. Take care.